The Vatican's most hidden secret has been revealed, the Chronicler, the device with which a picture of Jesus Christ was taken on the cross. Is it possible to witness past events? In 1972, Father Marcello Pellegrino Ernetti, 1925-1994, answered, yes, and in the Domenica del Corriere, a photograph was published which was said to represent Christ himself on the cross of his crucifixion. The image had been taken, according to the newspaper, with the help of the chronograph, the device invented by Ernetti. But Pope Pius XII himself allegedly demanded the confiscation of the machine which had become one of the Vatican's best-kept secrets. On the first Sunday in May 1972, the Italian weekly Domenica del Corriere published an article announcing the existence of the chronovisor, an almost miraculous device with which you could view images of events that happened a long time ago. In short, history, the past, could be filmed, seen, but also heard. As if it had happened before our eyes in real time, Perhaps it would have been a good joke if the revelation had not come from the inventor of the device, Father Marcello Pellegrino Ernetti. A respected music teacher, but also an exorcist priest and a specialist in quantum physics. What is a timer and how was it born? Marcello Ernetti had been working with Father Agostino Gernelli at the Catholic University of Milan in the 1950s on a church music machine when he heard Father Gernelli's father's voice picked up by the machine. Domenica del Corriere published a photograph that was said to represent Christ on the very cross of his crucifixion. From that moment on, Ernetti got to work, not alone, but together with a team of 12 great scientists, including, over time, two of the most famous physicists of the time, such as Enrico Fermi, one of the parents of the American Atomic Program, and Wernher von Braun, the creator of the dreaded Nazi V-2 rockets, but later also the head of the U.S. space program. The result, according to Ernetti, was incredible. With the help of the device, christened Chronovision, he was able to witness the astonished witness of events that took place thousands of years before. He initially caught the public's attention when he announced that, back in time to 169 BC, he witnessed the premiere of a tragedy, Thyestes, the culmination of which had been lost in the meantime, written by the father of Latin poetry, Quintus Ennis. What these scientists did would ignite the Catholic Church and attract the interest of NASA experts. The image of Christ, photographed by the chronograph. But by far the most shocking information was the revelation that, through the eye of the chronicler, Ernetti had witnessed the crucifixion of the Savior. And as proof, he presented a black and white image, which was published in the Italian newspaper, with the image of Christ, photographed by the chronoviewer even in those dramatic moments on Golgotha. The discovery, as well as photography, were the subject of great controversy for a time in the Italian academic and theological world. Another image that aroused great passions, but also controversy was the one in which Christ is supposed to be photographed, walking with two other characters, about the one behind him, speculating that it was Mary Magdalene. However, the discussions about the device and the images that would have been captured with its help stopped abruptly, just as they started. The conclusion of some articles and subsequent studies, signed by the defenders of the existence of the chronovisor was that Pope Pius XII himself demanded that the device be handed over to the Vatican, the chronovisor being classified, since then, among the best kept secrets of the Holy See. Others, much more skeptical, claimed that the device did not exist, was never invented, all being the fruit of Father Ernetti's imagination. A machine that sees the past, it is not known exactly how the first successful experience came about. It simply came to our notice then. The basic idea is very simple. It was just a matter of overcoming obstacles until then, said the elusive monk. Asked who invented the timer, he replied, no one. It was a collective creation. Not much is known about the construction of the timing mirror, only that it was composed of three parts. First, a lot of antennas capable of capturing light and sound. The antennas were made of an alloy of three mysterious metals. The second component was a type of sensor, activated and directed by light and sound waves. 
The catcher could be set to a specific location, a specific date, and even a specific person. The third component was a complicated system of sound and image recording mechanisms. The principle behind this car is very simple and someone could reproduce it with bad intentions. But I tell you, I've shown that the visible and audible wavelengths of the past are not destroyed. They don't disappear. The great thing about this invention was that we were able to recover that lost energy that recomposed scenes from a few centuries ago, said Father Ernetti. Witness the crucifixion of Jesus. Ernetti has been publishing articles about the chronovisor since 1965, but they have been overlooked. On May 2, 1972, the Italian weekly La Domenica del Corriere published a photograph depicting Jesus dying on the cross. In an interview, Ernetti stated that the image was captured with a time mirror. When we tried to take pictures of the day of the crucifixion, we had a problem. Cross crucifixions were daily at that time. The fact that Jesus was to have a crown of thorns on his head did not help either. Because, contrary to popular belief, this was also a common practice the monk explained. He recounted how they were forced to return a few days later, on the evening of the Last Supper. It simply came to our notice then. The agony of the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal of Judah. The trial, the ordeal. The film crew shot everything, but without details, it was important to keep images, not the script. This article aroused curiosity, optimism, even exuberance. Not so much in the face of an astonishing discovery, but especially in the face of open perspectives. A well-kept secret, on April 8, 1994, Father Ernetti died in Venice. Not before receiving his last visit to the Vatican on his deathbed. The timer had already been destroyed. It simply came to our notice then. With him, every secret is shattered. State, industrial, private secrets. The door could also be opened for a dictator. We ended up agreeing that we should disassemble this car, Ernetti said in 1993. Other researchers are skeptical about the existence of this device. No one saw him, not even his friends, Brun and Senkowski. He never made the names of his collaborators public, except for Wernher von Braun and Enrico Fermi, who are now dead, complained Peter Krasser. In Le Nouveau Mystère du Vatican, Father François Brun says that in 1955 the monk also worked with one of Fermi's disciples, another Nobel laureate in Japan and a Portuguese scientist. A proof that these great personalities of science have worked with Ernetti attracted by unprecedented research. The monk did invent something, but the Catholic Church doesn't tell us what. If the timer ever existed, only the Vatican knows. Most doubt that a church base, with remarkable intellectual preoccupations and unquestionable morality, could have played such a farce. At the moment, the timepiece is in the Vatican, being one of the best-kept secrets. This new discovery is also presented by François Brun. Who is the author of the book The New Mystery of the Vatican? Another book on the same subject is The Creation and Disappearance of the World's First Time Machine by Peter Krasser. If this device really exists, then its principles could have many uses. With this device you can even rewrite history. Events that will be presented subjectively can be analyzed with the help of the timer. Until it is made available to scientists for research, the device that sees the past lies in the locked basements of the Vatican. Being an extremely well-kept secret, books that talk about the existence of the chronovisor, the priest and theologian François Brun, in his book, The Dead Speak to Us, writes that Benedict Pellegrino Ernetti, a professor of pre-polyphonic music at the University of Venice, made a device he called a chronovisor with a team of 12 specialists. With his help he was able to capture in the 1970s the sound and image of an ancient tragedy played in Rome in 169 BC. The tragedy is Tieste by Quintus Ennis, forgotten today. With this device, the plans for a future holdup could also be received, thus being able to prevent the police and make the operation fail. It is not excluded, in this idea that in the future we will be able to record any events that have taken place, really unfolding. 
In this sense, it would be possible to create a true history of mankind. It would be easier to find out the perpetrators of crimes, but at the same time it would be possible to find out the development of the intimate life of each one, which I think he would not want. No one. Then life on Earth would radically change its coordinates. Because of this, even if such a device can become a reality, it will certainly not be widely used. What happened to the device and where is it? Although the reaction of Pope Pius XII to the discovery of the chronovisor was a positive one. This apparatus was dismantled and parts of it were scattered through various places known to few initiates, and the plans of the apparatus are said to have been deposited in more places in Rome. The Vatican, Switzerland and even Japan. According to Ernetti, while the timer was up and running, the following historical scenes were seen live, Mussolini's speech. Napoleon's speech when he proclaimed the Republic of Italy, a vegetable market from the time of Emperor Trajan. Cicero's speech. The Thias tragedy of the Roman poet Quintus Ennis in 169 BC. H. The Last Supper in the year 36, images taken between January 12-14, 1956. The crucifixion and apparitions of Jesus after death. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Receiving the Ten Commandments by Moses. Unauthorized timekeepers. More than 80% of Jules Verne and Wells' scientific predictions have been made. Among those still remaining in the field of SF literature is the time machine. If time travel is possible, its principle has not been discovered, and if man can make such leaps. It is only an accident. Danish researcher Pox Hegland has collected 274 cases in which people who disappeared decades ago have appeared today, convinced that only a few hours had passed. In 1992, some Norwegian fishermen managed to get 13 people carrying life jackets with the inscription, Titanic, out of the water. For such events in which people have been walking through the whirlwind of time, there is no official explanation. Paleoacoustics. Some scientists believe that the sounds emitted in the past are preserved in the environment, thus explaining why Ernetti and Gamelli recorded an unknown voice on the tape. This branch of science has also been given a name, paleoacoustics. The explanation for the incorporation of sounds into material things was constructed by analogy with the process of making clay vessels. During the spiral motion, the clay may retain the specific vibration, just like a primitive phonograph. Hence the idea of listening to ancient vessels. The idea was launched by Richard Woodbridge in 1965 but no one was able to deliver a coherent audio message. If you liked our documentary, don't forget to leave a comment, a like and subscribe. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful day with us.